So now we're entering one of the worst cutscenes in the game. You see, Blaze meets someone who's pretty comparable to her. Knuckles is an Emerald Guardian too. Knuckles is a serious person who's focused on duty and responsibility. And he doesn't really think that much of Sonic most of the time. He's very obsessed with trying to prove that he's better than him. Blaze once again says what the audience is thinking. But even though Knuckles has such in common with Blaze, you would think that he would be able to bond with her over their similarities. In fact, that would actually be pretty good for the message of friendship and stuff, because she would actually find a friend of Sonic's that's actually someone who liked her. Exactly! Cream is insensitive, but Blaze isn't. And people call Knuckles gullible and idealistic. The instant that he sees Blaze, he assumes that she's evil. This is someone who's supposed to be idealistic and gullible? Oh boy, here we go. Again, why is he- Why is he just saying that- Why is he not saying that he can relate to her? And because of the terrible cutscene presentation, I had no idea when I first saw this cutscene that Knuckles was supposed to have gotten crushed under the boulders and that the reason he was asking the song for help was because he needed help from underneath those boulders. See, the cutscene presentation was so bad that I didn't get what the cutscene was supposed to be telling me happened. Even on the first time, and the second time, and the third time. There's no excuse for the cutscene presentation being so visual novel style that sometimes you can't even tell what's supposed to be going on. The cutscenes would be a lot more engaging to watch if you could tell what was supposed to be happening most of the time. Like, there are a few moments in in games with plots that presentation like this that you honestly can't tell what's supposed to be happening. And, like, these visual novel cutscenes do the bare minimum of storytelling. Like, they tell you what the- they tell you the emotions of the characters by showing character portraits. And they have dialogue. But sometimes, some games with cutscenes like this don't even do that right. There are plenty of Sonic games that have visual novel cutscenes where the character portraits don't even properly express the motion that the character is supposed to be expressing. Like, I remember Tails being all scared in Rush Adventure when his character portrait clearly showed him smiling. See what I mean? She goes down pretty heavy. When I played this for the second time as Blaze, like on my first playthrough, I only died once. And that was just to the spike ball thing. Like again, that's the worst gimmick in this level. But yeah, like when I first when I played this as Blades for the first time, I didn't drown once. It's really not that bad when you know what to do. It's pretty fun, but I would never say this is the best level in the game. Because again, Leaf Storm is fun on the first playthrough. And Leaf Storm is a level that I would gladly go back to over and over again. Mainly because it doesn't have gimmicks like this, and doesn't have 8 billion bottomless pits. Like, I don't know. But yeah, I don't really- I'm not really a fan of the visual novel style cutscenes in any Sonic game. Like, as widely criticized as the presentation of Adventure 1 and 2 are, at least they actually show characters moving around. And what I showed back there was that a lot of the times, you'll soar really high with Blaze, and so you'll think, Hey, I can take advantage of that by going to a higher route. So I'll just walk to the right, and all of a sudden, it turns out there's a wall blocking it. And, like, that's pretty obvious in Water Palace. Sometimes you can't tell what's a wall that you can go past and what you can't. But, yeah, I don't really like the visual novel style cutscenes in the slightest. And Advance 3 started that trend. Which was pretty excusable because in Advance 2, which came right before it, you had, like, comic panel style cutscenes. Which actually show characters having multiple different body languages and stuff. And it was, it was great! 
I, I think I would prefer comic panel style cutscenes to visual novel style. I mean, I get that there's a lot of cutscenes in this game, and this is a handheld game, but the, the DS is like the N64. And N64 games were perfectly capable of having real, actual cutscenes. So there's no excuse whatsoever for this game having visual novel style cutscenes that barely even tell you what's going on. This is the laziest way to tell a story imaginable. I honestly don't understand why they would do such a thing other than tradition. Because in Event 3, and especially Sonic Battle, which had a billion cutscenes, like, I can sort of understand with the GBA games, because they're GBA games. I mean, there's limited memory and stuff. But with a DS game, it's, it's basically the N64. So why were they incapable of having real cutscenes? And sometimes the game does have actual cutscenes, and those are the ones that you can skip, ironically enough. Even though the best in the game. Like, the game proves time and time again that it is capable of having real cutscenes, and as blocky and polygonal as the character models look in them, at least they're interesting to watch. At least they're doing stuff, like Blaze running through a forest, and stuff like that. Like, I don't know. I mean, I guess they can be interesting if you only pay attention to the dialogue. But even then, sometimes the dialogue can have translation errors, and it's especially noticeable in Rush Adventure. Like, when I wrote my review of Rush Adventure, the amount of times that I was able to point out translation errors, and sentences that didn't make sense grammatically, or had typos or stuff, was ridiculous. Like, they didn't even get that right. Like, I know I've written on a lot about this, but it gets worse. They not only do that for the DS games, they continue that trend in a 3DS game. Sonic Generations 3DS, despite being essentially a handheld GameCube, has visual novel style cutscenes. Why? Generations on the consoles has real cutscenes. And a, a 3DS is essentially a GameCube in power and graphics. I mean, I guess that has to be a little different from it because apparently the whole changing characters thing in Smash Brothers couldn't be executed on Smash 4. And so that's why they couldn't have... That's, that's why they had to have Zelda and Chica as separate characters in Smash 3DS. I get that, but that shouldn't really apply to having bad cutscenes. But the reason that I didn't mention the presentation until now was that it wasn't really that much of a problem until now. Like, I'm not really nitpicky enough to insult presentation most of the time. Like, you're an idiot if you think that a story is terrible just because of the way it's presented. That's not really how it works, it's kind of a superficial argument to be honest. Like, I can understand not liking the story of the adventure games because you want a Sonic game to be comedic and lighthearted and for kids and stuff like that, but to hate the story of the adventure games just because the presentation is dated? I mean, at least they're interesting to watch. At least the characters are doing something and stuff is happening. With the presentation of Sonic Rush, with that Knuckles cutscene, I couldn't tell the three times that I watched it that Knuckles was supposed to have slammed into the boulders and gotten crushed under them, and that Sonic had to pull them out. I didn't realize that was what was happening. The only reason that I knew that was happening was because I watched the parody of Sonic Rush. Like, I don't know how many minutes it was, but Sonic Rush and something minutes by Roger Vanderby, which by the way is the best explanation of how bad the story of this game is. Like, I'm gonna put a link in the movie description at the end of this LP to show you exactly why I think that Rush's story is not very good. Because it's basically just, Blaze, you should rely on others. Blaze, you should tell Sonic to do all your work for you. Never mind the fact that you're an independent badass who doesn't need anyone's help. And, like, a lot of people say, 
that Blaze is the best female character in the entire Sonic franchise. And I agree with that. Like, she... she isn't really a stereotype in any way. I mean, Amy, she's a girly girl. And she's a stalker. So not exactly a good representation there. And Rouge, I personally think that Rouge was a strong female character before Blaze. Like, Blaze? Like, she's great, and I like her, but Rouge, she was the best part of Sonic Adventure 2. Like, she was a great comedy relief character because the characters that she teased were still competent and relevant and a threat. And, like, she has such hilarious lines. And Rouge is a badass gun agent who can kick and fly, and the problem is her design. Like, she's supposed to be a femme fatale, but she, they kind of went overboard. So, she's, she can be portrayed as sexist. But the problem is that even though Blaze is the best female character, she's still portrayed as wrong for trying to be independent. And plus, she's kind of dull when not in a context like this where she's very relatable and sympathetic. Because the thing is, Blaze is very single-mindedly focused on getting the Soul Emeralds back when they're gone. And Cream is supposed to be Amy's little sister figure, by the way. Not getting any negative vibes, really, Blaze. Let's see, you just met Knuckles, who immediately assumed that you were evil and tried to hurt you. And then, you met Amy, who immediately chased her six-year-old friend with a sledgehammer. That line is actually pretty interesting. Because it basically confirms that Blaze was told to suppress her emotions so that she wouldn't go out of control with her firepowers. So it makes her a lot more interesting because there's an explanation for why she's not very emotional. She's suppressing her emotions. I really like that. Like, I like when she smiles. They actually do a really good job with that. She has a very likable smile. But yeah, like, that has a lot of depth to her character. Like, maybe she was raised with a very strict and sheltered upbringing that heavily pressured her to suppress her emotions so that she wouldn't cause fiery destruction. Wait a minute. Blaze is Elise done right! Like, the only real difference is that Elise is a human who can't really fight. While Blaze is a lot more of a badass because she's a Mobian who can take much more punishment and she has firepowers. So, like, why couldn't they just use Blaze in 06? She would have been so much better. But anyways, I'll see you in the next part for the worst level in the game.